good day to you wherever you are watching from and this evening we're going to be looking at this topic how to stay sexually pure while you're in courtship let's have a word of prayer heavenly father we thank you for the opportunity to share this word together please help us to know your mind let this word reach out of our spirit thank you heavenly father in jesus name we pray a great servant of god that i respect so much daddy olushola arelgo he mentioned the fact that if you are not sexually pure you are not pure at all and i want you to understand that it's important for you to understand that sexual purity has a key role to play for your marriage to work but before the marriage you have the courtship period or the engagement period the engagement period is the period between the time the man and the woman the sister said yes to the proposal of the brother and then both of them are in courtship or they are engaged then that leads them to wedding and that leads into marriage so the period before the marriage is called the engagement period or which is referred to as the courtship period i need you to understand that sexual purity is very important during this period what are some of the things you can do that is going to help you to stay pure in a period like this so i'm going to give you some guidelines that can help you congratulations if a lady or a sister has said yes to your proposal as a brother and both of you are now engaged so how do you stay pure how do you avoid committing immorality or romance kissing pecking necking and all of those things that can defile you how do you how do you save yourself from that number one keep your heart pure remember the bible says for out of your heart are the abundance are the issues of life okay so it's important for you to make sure that your heart is pure for out of it are the issues of life i need you to know that these issues we are talking about will start from your heart first and so if your heart is dirty it's going to eventually reflect in the relationship that you are going to be having so i said that to say that it is important for you to note that when you keep your heart pure it's going to help you have a um have to be sexually pure during the period of courtship let me see what the bible says in proverbs 4:23 let me read it the way the bible says it he said guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life so keep your heart pure blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god stop thinking what is bad stop thinking what is evil stop thinking immorality stop thinking sexual perversion stop thinking things that can steer up the flesh and that can make you to be longing for what will destroy your courtship and eventually your marriage number 2 avoid sending sexual sex messages to each other you need to avoid it avoid it totally it is dangerous um a situation whereby a brother is sending a message to his sister and the brother is half naked or the sister is half naked or you are doing video call and then you are half naked and then you are doing the video call or the brother call you and while he called you you are on the bed and while you are on the bed you are too tired to stand up to quickly go and take clothes to cover your body and then you just expose your body like that in a video call 
that is more or less like a sexual message so what am i trying to say what i'm trying to say is that don't send sexual and immoral messages to yourself during courtship it's going to help you to stay pure number three guard your heart with all diligence guard your life guard yourself and be in self-control now samson was saying that i mean when i read the story of samson and the lady came to samson and said what will i do to make you weak as other men and then samson said if you do some certain things to me is going to if you bind me with one of the things he said if you bind me with rope i'm going to be weak like other men and the lady binded him with rope and he called the philistine to come and then she said the philistine come upon the samson and samson rose as at other time he, he broke all the rope and then he destroyed all the philistine now the lady was now saying that ah, you didn't show me all your heart you told me this and it was not so when the philistine came now the lady did another thing and then the lady brought up another point so what am i trying to say what i'm trying to say is that clearly samson could see what was happening but he felt he was in control and anybody and most people that fall into sexual temptation, they usually feel I'm in control. Nothing will happen. Nothing can happen. I'm, I'm not. I'm not uh, spirit. I'm not loose like that. I'm not. The moment you begin to feel you are in control, you uh, you you are not loose like that, and you are having that overconfidence feeling, then a fall is very close. So make sure that you, you, you guard yourself and you put in self-control. And for you to do that effectively, we have to go to number four. That means you need to set boundaries. What is boundaries? Boundaries is things you should not do in courtship. In our courtship, both of you will agree, the brother and the sister that want to get married, both of you will agree, we are not going to be holding each other's hands. We are not going to kiss. In fact, write it down. I was reading about a couple that stayed pure in their courtship. And they said part of what they did was to write down the boundaries. No kissing, no holding each other, no meeting in secret place. They set the boundaries for themselves. So please set boundaries for yourself. I will advise you that if you want to meet, you meet maybe in the church premises where people are seeing you, not a church that is um, that nobody is there. No. Or you meet in your leader's house, your spiritual leader's house. You meet in their parlor. They will be walking up and down, and both of you will meet. And apart from that meeting, both of you don't meet again. You only call on phone. You are just putting boundaries. So the boundaries can be so much like that. No, no kissing, no pecking, no, none of those things. Okay? You can set that boundaries. It's going to help you. Number four, five now, make sure that you are accountable. Okay? So I said you can meet in your leader's house and somebody is there, you know, going up. People can see you. Where people can see you, they don't hear what you are discussing but they can see you from afar. That is, you know, making, being accountable. Okay? Number next, which is going to be number six, flee every appearances of you. Don't kiss. Kissing is sexual involvement. When you are in courtship, it's going to steer up what you cannot manage. That's it. Don't kiss. Don't neck. Don't peck. All this organ, you'll be touching the breast of the lady as a man, and you will not remain the same again. So it's going to affect you. You'll be thinking about it. It can scatter your mental 
it can scatter your head. I'm telling you, stay pure. Don't worry, all the things you want to touch, you are still coming to touch it. And if you feel that you are in a hurry, fast forward your marriage. It's very simple. Fast forward your marriage. Just marry quick, quick, so that you can touch what you want to touch. But you know what? You don't need to do all of that. Calm down. That's the fruit of the spirit. One of the fruit of the spirit is self-control. Control your body. When you are not touching the sister, you did not die. When you didn't kiss the brother, you didn't die. So calm down. Be calming down. Be calming down. It's very important. So flee every appearance of evil. Once it appears like evil, please don't do it. Don't go and sleep in the lady's house. And don't go and sleep in the brother's house. I hope you are that. If you visit the lady, maybe she's in another town or another state or another faraway place, and you visit the lady, both of you should not stay in the same room. Okay? That is an appearance of evil. Abstain from every appearance of evil. I'm not the one that says that... Uh, is the Bible that says that it doesn't is not evil, it's appearance of evil. Abstain from every every first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22, from every appearances of evil. So, what are we talking here? Abstain when you visit the brother in a distance place, don't stay in his room. Is it that the brother leaves his room for you to go and stay in another person's place and you sleep in his house? Or you lodge in another sister's place and he sleeps in his house? Don't go and stay together in a dark room or in a lonely room with the person you are about to marry. It is appearance of evil. The Bible warned you, abstain from every appearance of evil. Now, let me, let me read what the Bible says to you from Aramic Bible in plain English. Flee from every evil matter. That's an evil matter. Flee. Can you see what the Bible says there? Let me read another version to you. Um... Weigh mouth New Testament. Hold yourself aloof from every form of evil. So don't go there. It's not going to help you. So number seven, focus on building friendship. Don't destroy each other with premarital sex. Focus on building friendship. The next one is feed your eyes. That should be my number eight now with the right materials. Feed your heart with the right materials. Don't go and be watching pornography while you're in coaching. It's going to steer you up and it's going to destroy you. Pornography is not even good even when you're not in coaching. Not to now talk of when you're in coaching. It's not good. Make sure that you don't have those kind of pictures on your phone that can steer you in the wrong direction. Um, the next one, which is going to be my number nine, make sure that you are in the right relationship. And my number 10 is going to be create time to pray together, seek the face of God together, fast together, have a day both of you will be praying together, have a day both of you will fast together, have a day you will share the scripture together. It's very important. Then that's number 10. Now, number 11, allow your pastor to fill your courtship period with the marital marriage class sessions. Okay, so your marriage class session is a period, your period, your marriage, your courtship period, your engagement period, let your pastor fill it with the marital class. What does that mean? Let's assume you are wedding in six months' time. Instead of the courtship class to just be two months out of the six months, let it be whole of that six months. Some pastors may not have the time, and some may have the time. If they have the time, request for it. 
But if they don't have the time, make sure that both of you have prayer points you are praying on together and you also share the scripture together. There's a manual you can reach out to me, I can give you that you can use to teach each other getting ready for marriage now throughout that period of courtship so now in your courtship period some of the things you need to pray about is your wedding day you need to pray about your child bearing when your child your wife is going to give that you need to pray about your future the finance of your home you need to pray about having your own house having the necessary things of life you need to pray about your future you need to pray about ministry if both of you will be going into ministry, you need to pay about clarity, you need to pay about number of children, you need to pay about location where you are going to settle down in life, the job you are going to settle down with. There is a lot of things that you need to discuss. And the last one I'm going to mention is that there are about 150 things that you need to talk about in courtship before marriage I, i'm not going to be able to mention everything here but let me just see if i can mention like a, a number of them number one you need to talk about where you are going to live discuss it number two how you are going to handle your in-laws number three how you are going to be sharing responsibilities at home number four the number of children you want to have number five how you are going to be managing yourself together with finances Number six, you're going to talk about when you're going to build your own house if you don't have one. Number seven, you talk about how you're going to get your own car. Number eight, you talk about whether you're going to get your own business. Number nine, you're going to talk about whether the type of um, school your children will go to. Number 10, you want to talk about whether both of you or one of you is going to further his education. Number 11, you're going to talk about when you fight with each other. When you have disagreement, how do you settle it? Number 12, you need to talk about the church you're going to be attending. Number 13, you need to agree on who you are going to submit to as your spiritual leader. Number 14, you need to talk about um, how you're going to handle um, issues that come up as emergencies. In your marriage and number 15 let me just give you one more how you are going to run your family in terms of spirituality do you want to create time to go for retreat from time to time and then let me just add this other one again you need to talk about whether you are going to ministry or not there are about 150 things if you contact me and i know you are ready for marriage i can check out one of our materials where we have the 150 stuff and get it available for you. I'm sure that this video has been a blessing. So try, stay pure. It's very important. Uh, blessed are the pure in that, for they shall see God. Abstain from every appearance of evil. Flee for adultery. I mean, uh, the Bible says in, I wanted to quote that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse. 33 so that's what i'm trying to quote but instead of me to just do that let me just quote the right thing um okay um let me just quote the right thing um i want to quote the right thing now so i am quoting from first corinthians chapter 6 not 15 now 6 verse 18 the bible says flee from sexual immorality Flee from sexual immorality. Flee from sexual immorality. Don't stay and be binding it and be losing it. Flee. Flee means run away. Remember Joseph. Flee. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Your courtship period will not destroy your future. In the precious name of Jesus. You are going to have a glorious wedding. And your marriage will be splendid. It will be an heaven on earth. And the name of the Lord Jesus will be glorified in you. In Jesus' name, it is so. God bless you. You have a wonderful time. Bye.